Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cobb, and here is the best rare champion in every single faction in Raid Shadow Legends. Let's start at the bottom, man, with the good old Sylvan Watchers, and while there's a good kiss to be made for good old Telak, I think we're gonna opt into Tree Shield Knot. Now's a good time to mention a disclaimer. Just because a rare is, like, the best rare in a given faction doesn't mean that you should obviously be automatically maxing it out and, oh, you're gonna be using it in endgame and all that kind of stuff. They might just be good for faction wars. They might just be good for secret rooms. That kind of thing. All I'm saying is, you should think twice before getting rid of a champ like Tree Shield Knot, right? His A1 is a triple hitter right off the get-go. Really, really tight to have. His goddamn A2, extremely good for survivability. A heal all allies by a whole bunch. Actually clocks all the way up to 35%. Uh, of their max HP as a heal on a 310 cooldown, fully bucked. This guy doesn't really take that many rare skill tomes to become an absolute Giga Chad, actually. Also an increased defense buff. And on the A3, we have a pretty weak revive, to be honest, but at least it shields the guys who you revive, right? For a percentage of the max HP, up to 35%, fully bucked. And it's reviving a couple of allies. So not bad as far as rare revives go. In fact, it might be one of the better rare champ revives in the game. Will we be using this guy? Well, I think that his aura is a clue. Increase ally speed in faction crypts by 15%. I just think he's a pretty damn good rare to have in your back pocket for the likes of faction crypts. Not to mention secret rooms, all that good stuff. Just a pretty solid guy to hang on to. Terlac. Ooh, it's a little bit of a close one, but I think I'll leave it at Tree Shield Knot for the Sylvan Watcher. Moving swiftly on to the Shadow Kin. By the way, feel free to play along in the comments, man. I'm sure everyone's going to have completely different ideas about this, um, depending on when you, where your account is. Certain rares that are really, really good for somebody else could be totally useless for you. And I think that the Shadow Kin are a good example of that, right? Life Taker, really, really damn good. But only if you're progressing through, I think it's normal Fire Knight, right? She's got a double hitter on the A1, each hit with a chance of placing a heal reduction debuff for a couple of turns. Not bad for an A1. The A2 is where it starts to get serious. Attacks one enemy three times with each hit having a chance of decreasing the enemy uh, 10 meter by 10%. Really, really good stuff, obviously. For Fire Knight progression. And the A3 places a Veil buff on this champ for one turn and a Reflect Damage buff on this champ for a couple turns. Somewhat useless for the finite encounter, but yeah, that's Life Taker. Pretty darn good. I suppose if you're not going Life Taker and you're just looking for, I don't know, like holding onto someone for faction crypts, you're probably looking at good old Odachi. So Odachi is just a decent all-rounder, somewhat unreliable provoke style tank, right, with the provoke on the A1, as well as a pretty damn solid A2 with an attack all, also placing a shield buff on the champ. Probably not the kind of guy that you want to take all the way to 60, but 50 faction crypts could be pretty decent. Next, this brings us to the dwarves, and this is all about where's Bulwark, man? Where is he? Oh god, now that I think about it, man, is it Kerzad or is it Bulwark? Ooh, I've already spoken about Kerzad, I think, in a prior video. While he's a damn good shout, I think we're gonna go ahead and stick with my original choice which is Bulwark. Bulwark, it's really, oh, I mean, his A1 isn't bad. I guess we'll cover it too. It's a double header with a chance of placing a weakened debuff for a couple turns. Not bad. He's all about the HP burn. Single target, maintaining HP burn as much as possible though. Really, really good against clan boss. Attack one enemy on the A2 with a 100% chance of placing HP burn for a couple turns. And on his passive, when attacked, has a 30% chance of extending the duration of all debuffs on the attacker by one turn. So not just the HP burn debuff being increased here. If this thing even just procs one time against something like clan boss, and you're auto extending the duration of all poisons, for example, and HP burn debuffs, and just everything against clan boss by one turn. The value of that is just ridiculously, unbelievably awesome. Is Bulwark that useful outside of clan boss? Well, you know, no, not really. And so in that sense, maybe Kerzad is the better option here, but I'm gonna stick with Bulwark for the sake of variety in this video. Before we steamroll on ahead, make sure if you haven't already, you head into your promo codes menu and input the code GAMELEAP to get yourself 10 experience brews in energy refill and 100k silver. I couldn't think of a smart segue to kind of pivot into this part of the video, but there it is, man. Just, just use the code if you haven't already. It's awesome. Next up, we jump into the Knight's Revenant faction, and oh my goodness. For it, for, for, it doesn't have that many rares, but I feel like there's like four or five good options here, man. Execution is pretty damn good. Coffin Smasher, there's a case to be made for that. Absolute Chad, although he does fall off eventually. We've got Torux, fairly newish champ, I think. Really, really solid. Ashwalker, really solid. I think we got to hone in, though, on good old 
Renegade, man. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Renegade might be the only rare champ in the game that has this kind of effect, right? The only rare champ. I don't know. This, she's not the only champ in the game that can do this, but as far as rares go, the A3, man, decrease the cooldown of all ally skills by two turns. This skill does not affect this champion. Okay. This champion will receive damage equal to 30% of their max health as a cost. But damn, dude. The amount of value a skill like this A3 can give to, I don't know, practically every team in the game, in all content in the game, is obvious. It can also be booked down using only two skill books to a 510 cooldown. Extremely, extremely good. The A2 is nothing to sniff at either. Attack a ran uh, at random three times with a 50% chance of placing decreased speed and also a decreased accuracy debuff for a couple turns if the target has any buffs. Just all round pretty damn solo but let's be real it's all about this just ridiculous um i don't know team build defining a3 next up we have the dark elves and dude i feel like this is another faction with just a crap load of good champs i mean christ if you're starting off with kale he's probably your choice you know but if you're looking for another champ to collect if you didn't start off with kale and you're looking for other champs to keep an eye out for i mean we got cold heart to pick from down here probably the best rare in the game uh spirit host over here pretty damn tight as well judge really not bad pin keeper really damn good too but to be honest even though we've already mentioned it just there in that breakdown yeah it's all about cold heart best rare in the game there's really no contest here right the max health damage is just too much to contend with hat seeker a3 can be booked down to a 410 cooldown attacks one enemy decrease the targets 10 meter by 100 percent obscene already has an extra 30 percent chance of inflicting a critical hit so you only have to build her with 30 percent crit chance and yeah damage scales off of enemy max health she hits for millions cold hat's the best rare among the dark elves i don't think there's really any discussion <laughs> about that oh god i actually forgot about her a1 and her a2 so her a1 is an attack four times at random like even that's kind of obscene and the a2 is an attack all enemies with a chance of placing a decreased accuracy also five percent poison debuff for a couple turns if the target's under heal reduction so even the rest of it's not even just all about the crazy damage and utility of the a3 everything is good on this rare extremely extremely good stuff but yeah when it comes to like faction wars i feel like you could clap all faction wars challenges by just maxing out a few of the dark elves res and you'd be just fine Really, really good faction when it comes to rare champs, man. Next up, we've got the Undead Hordes. And while not quite as powerful in the rare department as the Dark Elves, there are a few notable mentions as well. Including Grena, by the way, who's one of the few rare revive champs. Banshee, also pretty damn good. But where is she? There she is. Good old Frozen Banshee. It's gotta be the rare of choice in the Undead Hordes faction. Just because of her crazy, crazy clan boss utility. What's she actually rated as? Okay, yeah. 4.9. Makes total sense. Crazy poison damage and poison sensitivity. Yeah, Frozen Banshee. Let's try to step up the pace a little bit, man. I've, I've taken too long on some of these factions. We've got a long way to go still. Let's go straight into Demon Spawn real quick. Again, there's a few damn good rares in the Demon Spawn faction. Abyssal is honestly pretty good. Good all around buffs. Can cover multiple rolls at once. Really, really good for faction crypts for that reason. Diabolist, obviously campaign farmable. Really, really good 10 meter control, speed buffs, that kind of thing. Awesome stuff. Petrifia. Pretty damn good Frozen Banshee rival. But hey, man, my pick has got to be Fellhound. Quickest campaign farmer in the game. And honestly, the fact that his animation speeds are so fast really feed into that as well. He just kind of one-shots waves with virtually no animation. Very, very quick indeed. And yeah, it's sort of a joke to me <laughs> that his campaign location's rating is 4.9 when he is actually literally the fastest campaign farmer in the game. Like... How does he not have a 5 out of 5? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, man. Yeah. Fellhound, gotta hone in on that guy. Don't be using that guy as food. That'll be an error. Next up, we go into the Orcs, who have notoriously garbage res. There's a couple of alright picks. One of them, of course, being Gallic. I mean, if you're gonna hold on to one of them for the purpose of faction wars and uh, rare champ secret rooms, that kind of thing, then I guess Gallic will be your guy. Ironclad, also not too bad. I almost don't want to click on either of them. Are they really worth showcasing? I mean, Galax pretty good. I don't want to be too harsh on these guys, but... Eh, I mean, I guess for me, Ironclad would be fine. He has, like, some debuff removal, that kind of thing. Be really interested to hear what you guys have to say about the Orc Rays. Maybe I'm sleeping on one of these or something, but they all seem kind of crappy, man. I suppose for me, and I think that most people don't start off the game with uh, Galax, and so... Maybe he's fine to mention as the rare of choice for the Orcs. I don't know. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> really interested to read what you guys think about the orcs, man. Next up, we have, of course, the Skinwalkers, which I think is quite a straightforward call here to put Nalhorn in the number one position. Just a pretty damn, as far as rares go at least, a pretty damn reliable kind of provoke tank. He's also got, of course, that three turn cooldown unkillable to combo with his uh, provoke debuff on all enemies. Just all in all, really, really good stuff. A lot of control, super reliable, unkillable. Can't go wrong with holding on to Nalhorn. However, my honorable mention is going to be Lammy Bear, dude. Look at the absolute plight of this creature, man. I can't even move the camera to look at it in the face. And to be honest, I don't want to, man. <laughs> but this guy surprised me, I think. I was reviewing all of the rares yesterday when I was... Uh, compiling this list, getting this video ready to go. And this guy's kit sort of surprised me, which is funny because I forgot what it does now. So let's actually just quick read through, man. The A1 attacks one enemy two times, the chance of filling a random ally's turn meter by 5%. All right on the A1, not too bad. I think this is, by the way, strictly like a faction wars kind of rare that you might want to hold on to if you're lacking in the skinwalkers department. He might come in handy. The A2 is an attacks all enemies while also placing a strong continuous heal buff on all allies for a couple turns. Pretty damn good. Really, really like that kind of A2, man, in uh, that wave-based content, stuff like Faction Wars. And we've also got the A3, which is heal a target by 25%. Dial this thing down to a 210 cooldown, by the way, with books. And it also places a revive on death buff on them for a couple turns as well. And even his aura is usable in Faction Wars as well, if you're lacking an aura for that purpose. There you go, man. Lammy burr. Maybe garbage to most people, but again, if you're really lacking in Skinwalkers, he might be your optimal rare to hold on to. Let's head on into the Lizardmen, shall we? So this is another faction with pretty crappy rares, to be honest. Muckstalker, I guess, is one that you're going to want to be holding on to just for the sleep debuff. This obviously finds a crap load of value in Sand Devil, and so, yeah, if you've got no better option than Muckstalker, maybe just hold on to him, keep him secret keep him safe. But if you don't need the Muckstalker, then more generally speaking, for things like Faction Wars, Maybe you just want to hold on to Harrispex. As far as like a general kit goes, Harrispex is a pretty good shout, right? He's got a double hitter on the A1. Pretty good. Small chance of placing a weak poison. Not too bad. The A2 is a turn meter fill and speed buff, which not bad. Not as good as Diabolist's uh, speed buff and turn meter fill, but you know, not too far off either. And the A3 does have a revive, which weak revive, but it's a revive nonetheless. Next up, that brings us to the good old Orgrin tribes. We're almost towards the end, boys. If you're getting anything from this video, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, if you're having a good time, then make sure to hit like on the video and subscribe for more stuff just like this in future, man. I think that for the Orgrin tribes, it's quite straightforward. It's just gotta be Bellower, right? I mean, it's gotta be. Like, right behind Fellhound, as far as rare campaign farmers go, I think is like, what? One of the better, I mean, every single one of his abilities is an attack all. And so as a campaign farmer, he can work extremely, extremely good. Um, and later on in the game, you can scale him up and gear him out in things like stun sets just to make him a crazy, crazy control and debuffer style champ and just get him in a crap load of accuracy and speed and use him for that kind of purpose as well. Bellower, fantastic, dude. I got my hands on this guy. I'm never letting this guy go to food, man. Really, really damn good rare. Next up, we have Barbarians, which, again, is one of these factions that has a lot of good rares and even uncommons, man. Like, there's a lot going for Barbarians uh, in the earlier champs. We've got Macht all up and over here. She's pretty good. Berserker, really not bad. Soulbond Boya, probably coming in at a close second on this list, but we've got to give the first place. Even Sentinel, by the way, not bad. We've got to give first place on this list to the wonderful, the sumptuous War Maiden. And to be honest with War Maiden, it's re I mean, a chance of placing a weak poison is fine and all on the A1. It's really all about the A3 and attack all enemies with a 100% chance of placing strong decrease defense for a couple turns and it's only on a three turn cooldown fully booked. She's obviously extremely, extremely good. Skills for a long, long time throughout the game. To top it all off, she's also a campaign farmable, so... You don't even have to be spending skill tomes to get her fully maxed out. Let's move on to the secret order, shall we? And you know what? I'm going to stop real quick in the epic champion section, head on into Lady Atessa, and reveal unto you that if you are looking to start off a fresh Raid Shadow Legends account, make sure you do so by clicking the promo link down below at the top of the video description. Doing so will kickstart your account with a bunch of free starting supplies. Followed by about like a hundred dollars worth of free stuff, including Lady Atessa as you level up your account. 
culminating at level 25 with five epic skill tomes and a fresh wave of additional supplies, including another 500k silver and just a bunch of free stuff. This offer is only active until April 11th, so get it clicked quickly if you click on that link after April 11th. You'll still be getting a free epic champion. It will, however, be in the form of Juliana and you won't get the extra bonus supplies at level 25 because, yeah, this is a limited time offer active only during raids uh, fifth anniversary event. So hey man, get it done. Okay man, secret order rares. There's a lot of crap here, to be honest. A lot of crap, at least in my view. I don't know, maybe you'll disagree. Ethel, probably gonna be the go-to rare to pick up and hold on to for the likes of Faction Wars and what have you if you did not pick Ethel as your starting champ. If you did pick Ethel as your starting champ, then I don't know, one of the healers maybe? Is it Chaplin? Chaplain or Mother Superior? Damn, this one's actually quite tough. You know, there's even a case to be made for Templar, man, just because of, like, the uh, multiple attacks that he throws in, maybe? I mean, the provoke's a little unreliable. I'm not I'm not quite sure how worthwhile Templar is. I suppose if you want to be safe, Mother Superior is probably the way to go. It's like a Faction Wars uh, kind of healer. I think I've been focusing a lot on Faction Wars on this one, but I don't just want to repeat the same old rares that people cover in all of the other videos as well, you know, so maybe Mother Superior just isn't the best rare at all <laughs> for Sacred Order, but yeah, I do want to draw some attention to her either way, right? All round good heals. Heals an ally by 30% of this champ's max HP. Also places a shield buff equal to any surplus heal for two turns. If the target is fully healed, pretty tight. We've also got a weak continuous heal buff for a couple turns. Also placing a shield, um, yeah, if an ally's HP is full. Just all round good sustain, and if you hag are going to be holding on to her for use in faction walls, then hey, ally speed and all battles by 30% is the aura. Not too bad. Now, will you be taking Mother Superior to level 60? Almost certainly not. Good god, no. And is she the best rare among Sacred Order? Well, no, that probably goes to Aethel, but I'm struggling here a little bit, okay? I'd love to hear what you guys think about Sacred Order and which rares you feel are maybe worth holding on to. Okay, man, let's head on in to the High Elves. We've got Eris, we've got Elhain, Avenger, Apothecary. These are all pretty good. Reliquary Tender. Oi, 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 oi. I mean, obviously, the award has got to go to Elhain. If you did not start off with Elhain and you're looking for a rare to hold on to, she's probably just the best rare uh, for the High Elves. Get her if you don't. Get her if you need her. There's definitely a big shout out to be made for Reliquary Tender. But I guess besides Elhain and Reliquary, probably gonna be apothecary who i think you can probably take to level 60 without feeling too bad about it yeah his kid is just too good we won't break it down too much because he's a very old champ and a lot of people start off with him using uh promo links and stuff like that so yeah it's an attack three times at random on the a1 really really good a standard heal on the a3 and a big big increase speed buff and 10 meter fill on the a3 really really good champ Get Apothecary, goddammit. And then it's time to end on a another tough one, man. The Banner Lords. They have a decent amount of rares. Picking the best one is really, really hard, though. Valerie? Bymaster? Um, Dagger, even? Some people really, really swear by Dagger. God, I don't think any of these are particularly great. I might be an absolute nut job. Maybe I'm sleeping on some of these. I'm not sure. I think I'd give it to Valerie, maybe. Are you going to take it to level 60? No, I don't think so. But I think that most of all, uh, I'm like the shield is pretty good and the heal is pretty good on the A3. It's fine. Uh, I think that our real strength comes into play on the A2, though. Mostly because, not because of the 25% increased attack buff, even though that's like pretty good. It's all about increasing the duration of all buffs and allies by 110, right? I think that's what it's really all about. Oh, it also decreases the duration of all debuffs and allies by 110 as well. So it's sort of like a soft sort of pseudo cleanse as well. But yeah, increasing the duration of buffs and allies is nutty as hell. I think the value of this really can't be overstated. Increasing the duration of key stuff like increased attack, like speed buffs, like barriers and shields. I think that's where it's really at with Valerie. And I think that she will get you quite a good bit of value, even if she's not quite worth taking all the way to 60. Oh Christ, maybe she is. Maybe you disagree with that, you know? Maybe there's some rares here that you actually do feel are worth taking a 60. That'd be pretty interesting to hear as well. No, man, there it is. The best rares for every single faction in Raid Shadow Legends, man. Unequivocally correct as well, and you can't even tell me that I'm wrong. I'm just kidding. Tell me that I'm wrong down below, man. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, while you're down there, make sure to click subscribe so you catch all future uploads just like this one. Remember to hit that promo link down below as well at the top of the video description if you're going to be starting off a fresh raid account to kickstart your account with a whole bunch of free goodies. For now, do enjoy the rest of your day, and I'm going to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later, man.